Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the group composed of myself, Terrence, and Amanda. We are currently doing the SN1, SN2 reaction, also known as the reactivities of alkyl halides and nucleophilic substitution reactions. Uh, the basis of this experiment is to calculate the reactivities of different uh, alkyl halide reagents based upon using a solution of uh, silver nitrate and ethanol and also sodium iodide and acetone. So based upon the reactivities and the formations of precipitates in each of the vials that you've seen here, depending on whether it is an SN1 or an SN2 reaction, we will determine um, what the reactivities are based upon the reagents and what that will tell us about each of the different components that we have mixed in this experiment. In our first step, we'll be adding one milliliter of one percent silver nitrate ethanol. And well, let's see what happens. Let's each. Test it. Yeah, Don't forget to wear your goggles. Yeah, it doesn't come to the Safety first. In the next step of our experiment, we are going to take one drop of each of the halkyl halides and we are going to put it in the test tube for the SN1 reaction that has a solution of uh, silver nitrate and uh, ethanol. And then from there, we will determine whether or not a precipitate or reaction formed, and that will tell us whether or not it is an SN1 or an SN2 reaction. Okay. This reaction is bromobenzene. <laughs> so there's no reaction, so we're going to add it to the water bath. <laughs> for approximately one minute. The second reaction is going to be a solution of one bromo adamantane, which we will also put one drop to see whether or not a reaction develops. We did see a reaction form. The solution has become cloudy. For our third alkyl halide, we will now be conducting a reaction of alpha bromotoluene to see whether or not a precipitate will form and to tell us whether or not this is an SN1 or an SN2 reaction. So of course, we will have one drop of the solution in our test tube. There is a reaction, as you can see, it has become cloudy, and we will now insert this back on the test rack because it is no longer necessary to put it in the water bath. For our fourth reaction, we'll be adding ethyl chloroacetate. Instant reaction, so we'll be adding it to the hot bath. Alright, we gotta be important now, sir. Alright? After the hot water bath of ethyl chloroacetate, there's a precipitate. The next reaction, we'll be adding one drop of 1 bromo 2 methyl propane to see whether or not a precipitate forms. There is not an immediate reaction or a precipitate that forms, so now we will add it to the hot water bath. After being in the water bath for more than a minute, we will now take out the reaction of 1-bromo-2-methylpropane. And as you can see, a reaction has formed, and we will now put it back on the test rack. For our seventh reaction, we'll be adding two bromo, two methylpropane. I did that. There's an instant precipitate. For our eighth reaction, we'll be adding one bromo butane.
And there's no success we'll be adding it to the hot bath for approximately a minute. Reaction is going to be one chlorobutane. Now, one run of this versus one run of that will give you a much clearer sample of the fractal distillation versus the This is why this technically there's no instant precipitate, so it's going to be added to the hot bath. Is it a pamper run the sample? And there's still no precipitate, so there's no reaction. We're proceeding with the SN2 reaction, which is 18% of sodium iodide in acetone. And we're going to put one milliliter of this in all the testers. Now for this part of the experiment, which is the SN2 reaction, we will now insert the various alkyl halides, halides into our reagent to see whether or not a precipitate and a reaction form. So we will begin with one drop of the bromobenzene. Our reaction does not form, so now we will put this in the ice cold water bath. Now, for the second alkyl highlight, we will now mix a solution of two bromo butane with one drop. A precipitate, no reaction forms, and now we will also put this in the ice water bath. After for about a minute, we have taken out our initial reaction of the bromobenzene. It is still a crystallite white solution, so we can conclude that there wasn't a reaction that actually formed after being in the water bath. And now we'll go back to the rack. So likewise, around the same time, we will now take out our second solution of the 2-bromobutane. And again, there was neither a reaction nor a precipitate that formed, so we can conclude that a reaction did not occur. And now we will do our third alkyl halide, which will be a one-drop solution of alpha-bromotoluene. Alpha which we will insert one draw. It has gotten slightly cloudy, but besides from that, neither a precipitate nor a reaction form, so we will insert this in our ice cold water bath for our reaction. After about one minute, we will now take out our solution of bromotoluene. As you can see from here, the solution has gotten cloudy and there is a precipitate that is forming, so we can concur that a reaction has occurred. And we will now insert our reagent back on the test tube rack. Fourth reaction or alkyl highlight is ethyl chloroacetate. There's no instant precipitate, so we'll put it in the ice cold water bath. And the fifth 
one is going to be the 1 bromo 2 methyl propane. propane. There's also no instant precipitate, so it'll be added to the water as well. Yes. So after about a minute, you take out the ethyl chloracetate and there is a precipitate. Yeah. And the sixth one that we're doing is one bromo adamante. We add one drop. There's no instant precipitate, so it goes in the water bath. And now we can observe the one bromo to methyl propane. And there's no reaction. Four seven. Reaction, we were just doing two bromo two methyl propane. Instant reaction, so we'll be placing it to the back. <laughs> For our eighth reaction, we'll be doing one bromo B2. SN1 and SN2 reagents, as we have listed over here, what we have noticed is that the final results for how the reagents reacted with the alkyl halides, that they were not what we initially concluded. The only thing that we can speculate at the moment was that there was a contamination, particularly in the alkyl halides, before we had to the experiment, either from alcohol or from um, pre-lab production in the back of the lab room. So as you can see from here, some of the reactions were not what were what was supposed to happen. So as a result, our results were a bit skewed. But considering that we had re already reported the initial results, we are still confident that we were able to tell which one of these solutions was an either an SN1 or an SN2 reaction. They should not be appearing silver as these appear.